Mexico is in a rather particular situation compared to other countries. Not only does it have to prepare to defend its sovereignty from external enemies, but it also has a ferocious and well-armed internal enemy, drug trafficking. For years the government's response has been to bring the army into the fight against the cartels, but this proves to be very difficult. Recently, the Mexican Congress discussed the law for the protection of airspace, arousing mixed feelings in the population, but also marking how the Air Force could face criminals in the future. In this new military aviation video we want to tell you about the law that promises to revolutionize the dispute of the skies in Mexico, join us to learn everything about it. On February 22, 2023, Almost a year after its presentation by Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador, the Mexican Senate approved the controversial airspace protection law. This is a reform that authorizes the Sedena, or Secretariat of National Defense, to lead the coordination in matters of surveillance, and authorizes the military authorities to issue technical regulations at their discretion, among other measures. The head of Sedena, Adán Augusto López, indicated that the goal is to cover the legal vacuum that exists in Mexico to adequately protect the Mexican airspace as part of the national territory, generating interinstitutionally coordinated bodies. López refers to the creation of an airspace surveillance council, integrated by Sedena itself, the Navy, foreign affairs, communications, infrastructure and transportation. This new entity, as estimated, will be under the command of the head of the executive branch. This council would be delegated, among other responsibilities, the power to issue air alerts and intercept aircraft that fly over Mexican airspace without authorization, whether clandestine or irregular. Of course, they are also given the power to take whatever action they deem necessary, even if it means shooting down suspicious aircraft. The approval of this project has generated a wave of rejection by the political opposition, finding in this initiative the opportunity to further militarize the country. The law is in sync with the launch of F-5EF fighters, belonging to the 401 Air Squadron, which will come into operation during the first months of 2023. To this would be added the incorporation of new strategic transport aircraft. The F-5s are of fundamental importance, since they fulfill missions of aerial surveillance and interception of aircraft that enter Mexico illegally. The question is whether the F-5s are ships up to the task of defending the airspace of a country that faces threats such as drug crime groups that use large planes and ships to transport narcotics. The F-5 is a supersonic combat aircraft designed and produced in the 1960s by the legendary Northrop Company. It was very successful during the Cold War, so in the 1970s, the F-5 won the International Fighter Aircraft Competition, a program aimed at providing modern and affordable aircraft to America's allies. That upgrade was known as the F-5 Tiger II, and it includes more powerful engines, increased combustion capacity, increased wing area, and improved leading edge extensions for better turning rates. Thanks to these new qualities, it can perform all kinds of missions like air and ground attack, training, and so on. As for dimensions, the F-5 has a length of 14.5 meters, a wingspan of 8.1 meters and a height of 4.1 meters. Its empty weight is 4,349 kilograms, with a maximum takeoff weight of 7,157 kilograms. The power plant consists of two General Electric J85G21B turbojets that give it a maximum speed of 1,875 km per hour. Its range is 1,405 km, with a flight ceiling of 15,800 meters. Regarding the armament, it has two 20mm Pontiac M39A2 cannons located in the nose. These weapons have 280 projectiles. In addition, it has seven weapon hardpoints, two wingtip launch rails, four underwing pylons, and one underfuselage pylon. A wide variety of bombs and missiles can be used in this structure, although for the purposes of interception missions, the most widely used models are the AIM-9 Sidewinder and AIM-120 AMROM air-to-air projectiles. The Northrop F-5EF Tiger II fighter aircraft of the Mexican Air Force turned 40 in August 2022, so they are heading for their fifth decade in service, 
and they still do not have a feasible and concrete replacement in the short or medium term. Its history dates back to 1980, when the Mexican Ministry of National Defense began a phase of renewal and modernization of its fleet. As part of this, in February 1981 the acquisition with the United States of 12 F-5 aircraft, 10 F-5E single-seaters and 2 F-5 F-2-seaters for training, was confirmed for a value of almost 1,500 million Mexican pesos. Since then, two aircraft have been lost in accidents, the first in 1983 and the second in 1995. The F-5s are powerful aircraft that refuse to retire around the planet, but it is a reality that sooner or later they will be too old to be able to meet the defense objectives that Mexico has. On this, it is useful to know some of the relevant articles within the airspace protection law. Based on the fact that Sedina will coordinate the participation of the corresponding authorities for space surveillance, any aircraft that does not activate its transponder code or turn it off during the flight is considered to be at risk, as is any aircraft that changes route without reason, that does not respond to the instructions of the transit service, that overflies restricted areas or makes sudden changes in speed, height, course, or maneuvers. Given these signs, units such as the F-5 will be able to take action to intervene. The airspace protection law highlights the need to modernize both the means of detection and control, as well as the fleet of interceptors and combat ships for direct confrontations with suspicious ships. That is why there are other projects pending within the Mexican army, among which we can highlight the modernization of the air surveillance means with which the ships in service operate, the acquisition of modern radars to provide greater strength to the coverage of space air transport and the strengthening of strategic transport capacities through the purchase of new cargo units. Of course, all this requires time and money to be able to materialize, with the airspace protection law, Mexico seeks to give impetus to this long process. At the moment there has been no news on projects to acquire combat ships to replace the old F-5 Tiger II fleet. Various options have been considered over the years, but none of them have paid off. We must wait to see if this new legislation ends up being an effective boost, or just a new episode in the long war against drug trafficking. When the Mexican Air Force withdrew its historic Pilatus PC-7, a question arose regarding the future of the institution. The long-awaited replacement came from the north, when the first Beechcraft T-6C Texan II arrived in 2010, multifunctional turboprop aircraft that became a fundamental piece. More than a decade after their entry into service, the Mexican Texan IIs begin a new chapter in their history, this time as gunships with a variety of weapons ranging from missiles to machine guns. In this new military aviation video we are going to tell you all the details about that transformation, and what kind of weapons were incorporated into the platform. Let's start by briefly describing the protagonists of this process, the Texan II. The T-6 is a US-made turboprop aircraft, whose first flight was in 2000, entering service the following year as a training unit. It has a length of 10.2 meters and a wingspan of identical proportions. It houses a two-person crew, and originally those places were occupied by an instructor and a student, but over time, the educational role of the T-6 mutated. The Texan II engine is based on a Pratt & Whitney Canada PT-6 A68 turboprop, which generates 1,131 horsepower and allows it to reach a top speed of 586 km per hour, with a cruising speed of 515 km per hour. In terms of resistance, its range is 1,660 km, with a flight ceiling of 9,450 meters. As we anticipated, in 2017 the Mexican Air Force began an artillery program for its historic T-6C Texan II aircraft, to which machine guns and rocket launchers were added. Mexico has a weapons acquisition program for these aircraft, Initially the objective was to have 60 containers to equip its 30 Texan II aircraft, later we'll delve further into the importance of this purchase. 
In those years, the investment of the Mexican Air Force to equip the 30 planes with air-to-air -air and air-to-ground artillery reached $17 million. Most of the budget was allocated to containers with their respective accessories, tools, spare parts, technical documentation and training for their operation and maintenance. The intention of the Mexican Air Force was to expand the institution's air capabilities, incorporating training, reconnaissance, patrolling, and surveillance missions, and as a complement to the air defense system. But from the beginning of the program, no major news was given, just some photos. That changed at the end of October 2022, during the national defense exercise carried out at the Santa Gertrudis National Training Center. In that event, the Mexican Air Force used for squadrons of T-6C Texan II aircraft, in live fire exercises with rockets and machine guns, being the first major live demonstration of the destructive power of these renewed aircraft. At the moment it is known that six planes were armed with LAU-68 rocket launchers, which use FFAR folding fin unguided rockets, also known as MK-4. They are commonly used by U.S. military aircraft as an air-to-air -air weapon, with greater range and effectiveness than machine guns and automatic cannons when it comes to intercepting and shooting down enemy bombers. Over time it was also modified for use as a rocket motor for air-to-surface weapons. The original FFAR MK-4 was developed in the late 1940s, was approximately 1.2 meters long and weighed 8.4 kilograms, with a high explosive compound warhead of approximately 2.7 kilograms. It also had four fins that opened at launch to stabilize the rocket by rotating movement. Its maximum effective range was approximately 3,400 meters. Due to its low initial accuracy, it was generally fired in bursts, so some planes carried as many as 104 rockets. In addition to that launcher, seven other units of the T-6C Texan II were equipped with two FN Herstal HMP-250 pods, with an FN M3 P.50 caliber cannon for air-to-ground missions. It's exactly the kind of firepower you need when the mission involves destroying a narco bunker or blanketing an area to avoid enemy fire. The FN M3P is a machine gun with a high rate of fire, capable of remote fire and specially designed for use in aircraft, land vehicles and boats, with a maximum range of 1,850 meters. The FN M3P can be used to destroy lightly armored vehicles and even small aircraft. The total length of this machine gun is 180 mm, of which 91 correspond to the barrel. It has a total weight of 37 kg, and its body is made of solid steel, like the barrel, which, according to the producing company, has a useful life of 10,000 shots. Finally, to avoid excessive recoil and improve effectiveness, it has a vibration reduction system. Some T6CS were also fitted with Dillon Aeropods, which carry 7.62 caliber M134 minigun machine guns, mounted under the wings of the aircraft. The Dillon Aero Gun Pod is an M134DH self-contained weapon system that mounts to the aircraft via Texan two hardpoints. Each empty container weighs 73 and a half kilos and up to 158 kilos already loaded with the 3000 bail belt. The system is electrically powered with two 24-volt batteries each, and the assembly allows remote-controlled firing and has a warning system so that the pilot knows when the container has at least 100 cartridges left. In addition, the Sedina has indicated that the containers, being certified by the manufacturer of the T-6C aircraft, guarantee their use without affecting the structure of the aircraft. The M134 minigun is a six-barreled rotary machine gun with a very high rate of fire that can reach 2,000 rounds per minute. It measures 800 millimeters long, with 558 millimeter extension barrels. In total, it weighs between 39 and 19 kilos depending on its configuration. The M134 is a Gatling-type gun, so it needs an external motor to provide the necessary energy for the barrels to rotate. 
It is a sort of scaled-down version of the legendary M61 Vulcan 20mm rotary machine gun. While it doesn't even come close to that destructive power, the minigun is a powerful tool that provides a large volume of continuous fire. The incorporation of the structures to carry aerial and ground fire systems provides the Texans of the Mexican Air Force with a higher level of operability in a critical context of the war against drug trafficking. Criminals are increasing and improving their arsenal every day, so law enforcement must keep up with that growth. In 2017, the Mexican Air Force began the gradual withdrawal of what was the institution's largest tactical aircraft, the Pilatus PC-7, so it was essential to give the Texan to a new life. Mexico faces the challenge of improving its air force with limited resources and having a powerful and unscrupulous internal enemy, the narco cartels. The Texan II gunships will be an invaluable piece of this arsenal, not only to fight crime, but also to guarantee air sovereignty. The first months of 2023 have been days of great renewal for the Mexican army. One of the most promising news came from the leak of military documents in which the intention to purchase 18 Sikorsky UH-60 Black Hawk utility helicopters, a classic of the North American industry, is established. This could take place in the coming months, providing the Mexican fleet with a fundamental tool to be able to carry out the new control, surveillance and communication tasks that have been incorporated as part of the fight against drug trafficking and the defense of air heritage. In this new military aviation video we want to provide you with the details of that purchase, and what capabilities the Black Hawk can offer to the currently neglected Mexican Air Force. Stay with us to know everything about it. In the first days of January 2023, it was confirmed that Mexico plans to acquire new air equipment in 2023. As reported, the Mexican Air Force Command relaunched the project to acquire a fleet of at least 18 Sikorsky UH-60M helicopters Blackhawk. An investment of around $652 million is expected for these new aircraft, which will be equipped with floor equipment to detect enemy infrared radiation, and with mounting to place artillery pieces. The Mexican Air Force currently has a fleet of helicopters of this model, we'll get to know its operational history in detail later. The initial information about the purchase of the UH-60M became known from the dissemination of classified documents obtained by hackers that make up the Guacamaya network. These files have revealed the project of the Mexican Air Force, whose commander, General Gerardo Vega Rivera, sent a letter to the United States Northern Command to request a quote for 18 UH-60M. General Vega Rivera sent that letter on June 2nd, and it was answered on the 27th of that month to agree on a virtual meeting between military commanders from both countries. To dimension this negotiation, it is important to know more in depth the aircraft that are the protagonists of the purchase. The UH-60 Black Hawk is a medium-duty military utility helicopter whose design began in the early 1970s with the aim of correcting all the tactical shortcomings found in American helicopters during the Vietnam War. The concept of the utility helicopter in combat is that it has dual systems in order to withstand enemy fire. This is how an aircraft with twin controls and by turbine was conceived. In addition, in the event of an imminent emergency landing, the components of the UH-60 were designed to undergo progressive deformation, protecting the helicopter's cockpit, in this way, a robust design was achieved, capable of withstanding extreme situations. The Black Hawk is a helicopter ready to operate with a crew of two and two crew chiefs. In terms of dimensions, it has a length of 19.7 meters long, a main rotor diameter of 16.3 meters and a height of more than 5 meters. Its empty weight is 4,819 kilograms, and its maximum weight at takeoff time is 10,660 kilograms, so it has a spectacular load capacity. The power plant has varied, but frequently it is about two General Electric T700G 701C turboshafts, which allow it to reach a maximum speed of 257 km per hour, with a cruising speed of 238 km per hour. The great quality of the Black Hawk is its range of almost 600 km, which provides a wide operational spectrum for all types of missions. 
In case of running into problems, the UH-60 can in place any of these machine gun configurations, 2M240H caliber 7.62mm, 2 minigun M134 of 7.62mm and 2 GAU-19 of 12.7mm. In addition, it has aerial structures to transport rockets and missiles, which can be crucial when dealing with small planes or suspicious aircraft that cross Mexican airspace with criminal motives. In the late 1980s, the base model was upgraded to the UH-60L, which included more power and lift capacity with the installation of the G-Engine model 701C. After a few years, a new model was created, the UH-60M, which extended the service life of the UH-60 design into the 2020s. That version shows more power and lifting capacity, as well as electronic instruments, state-of-the-art flight controls and navigation control. Black Hawks can perform a variety of missions, including tactical troop transport, electronic warfare, or medical evacuation. In air assault operations it can transport a squad of 11 soldiers with their equipment or an M102 105mm howitzer with 30 rounds and 4-piece servers in a single trip. In another alternative, it can carry 1,170 kg of cargo internally or 4,050 kg externally. The Black Hawk is equipped with advanced avionics and electronics to increase survivability and capability, as well as the global positioning system. The Mexican Air Force ordered its first two UH-60 LS in 1991 for the transport of Special Forces units, to later acquire another four in 1994. Then, on August 25, 2011, the Mexican Navy received another three UH-60M under the Merida Initiative Aid Program, an assistance program whereby the United States pledged to supply helicopters at low prices, as well as various equipment for their operation, to combat drug cartels in the war against narco-trafficking in Mexico. The last entry occurred in 2016, with the delivery of 18 Black Hawk that were acquired in 2014 at a price of $203 million. This latest addition made the Mexican company the second largest UH-60 fleet in Latin America, only behind Colombia. This important purchase would reactivate the long-delayed acquisition of military aerial material by the Mexican government, suspended upon the arrival of the current president Andres Manuel López Obrador, whose austerity policy affected in principle any war spending and with it the modernization of any kind of weapons. However, in recent months, President Obrador expanded the agenda of the armed forces in an unprecedented way, adding numerous operations that, to be completed, depend on the incorporation of new and better units in the Mexican hangars. In the case of the purchase of a new fleet of Black Hawks, these helicopters are already manufactured and their delivery would take place in less than half a year, to integrate them into three air squadrons of the Mexican Air Force. To achieve this modernization goal, President Obrador launched a new economic policy, ordering new budget cuts in 2021 in all areas of the federal public administration, except for the armed forces, whose budgets for 2023 will grow by notably, which will end up having an impact on acquisitions and renewals. For now, the purchase of these 18 helicopters remains to be completed, but the hacked documents suggest that Mexico was prioritizing the strengthening of its air force, something that for years was in second place. Over the months, it will be verified if these new Black Hawks will join the Aztec fleet currently in service. Before saying goodbye, we want to invite you to subscribe and activate notifications to be aware of all our news. We will meet again in the next installment of Military Aviation.